morning swans and falcons and welcome to a brand new week. Our date today is the 25th of January and our learning intention is can I find a percentage of an amount? If you'd like to take a minute just to write those down and we can get started with the lesson. Okay so to begin with this morning I'd like you to have a go at these Monday morning wake up questions. So they should be nice and easy for you given all the work we did on fractions, decimals and percentages last week but have a go, pause the video and I'll come back to you in a moment. Okay, so I hope you've had time to have a bit of a try at these questions. So let's have a look at the first one. So we know that percentages are always out of 100, aren't they? So therefore we know that 100% of 11 must be 11. Okay, what about 100% of 425? Yep, 425. And nice and easy, 100% of 2.5 must be 2.5. Well done if you got all of those right. I wasn't trying to catch you out. Okay, what percentage of this 100 square is shaded? Write the answer as a fraction. Okay, so let's have a look. So we can see a row of 10 here, shaded in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So that's 50 squares. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61. Okay, so that's 61 out of 100 squares shaded. So we know that as a percentage, that is 61%. But the question's asked me to write my answer as a fraction. So that would be 61 out of 100. Well done if you got all of those right. Okay, so before we properly get into the lesson, I want to just have a quick look at what does 100% actually mean? So 100% means everything. It means absolutely everything. It means all of it, doesn't it? It means the whole thing. And it also means 100 out of 100. So it means 100%, the whole thing. So now we have a bar model. And our bar model represents 100%. So it's 100%, it's our whole, it's our whole thing, okay? If we split that whole thing, my 100%, if I split that into two parts, that means I can still label my bar as 100%, but I can also label each section 50%, because I know that half of 100% is 50%. Okay, so in this example here, I still have my bar, and it still represents 120, but this time the question is asking me, what is 25% of 120? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, because I know that all percentages are out of 100, I'm going to convert that percentage into a fraction. So that would give me 25 one hundredths. Okay, but I also know that that fraction can be simplified. So I can divide my numerator and my denominator by 25 which would give me a new fraction of one quarter. So then I can go ahead and I can divide my bar model up into four parts. Okay, so I'm splitting it in half and then in half again. So my bar model is now made up of four parts, four equal parts. And one of my parts also represents 25% because I've worked out that 25% is equivalent to 25 hundredths, which is also equivalent to one quarter. So I know that one of my sections is equivalent to 25%. So now I know to find out what 25% of my 120 is, all I need to do, to do is divide 120 by 4. So I'm going to write that 120 divided by 4 equals 30. So 120 divided by 4 equals 30. So I can go ahead and label each of my four sections as 30. Okay, so again, I've got another example. I've still got my bar and it still represents 120. 120 is still my whole. 
okay? But this time, the question is asking me, what is 10% of 120? So the first thing I'm going to do is split my bar into 10 sections, okay? You have to bear with me, these are probably going to be very uneven sections. Okay, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I've got my ten slightly uneven sections there. Okay, but I'm trying to find what 10% of 120 is. So I've got ten sections, so I'm trying to find out what this section represents. Okay, so to do that, I know that I can take my 120 and divide it by 10 because I'm trying to find out what one section is. So 120 divided by 10 equals 12. Okay, so I can go ahead and label each section as 12. I won't do them all because I'll be here for quite a long time, but 10% of 120 equals 12. Okay, so so far we've worked out what 50% of a whole is, what 25% of a whole is, and what 10% of a whole is. Okay, but what about trying to find out what 1% of a whole is? Let's give that a go. So this question is asking us, what is 1% of 200? Okay, now at this point, I would like you to remember that percentages are always out of 100, okay? So if we're trying to find out what 1% is, we simply need to divide our whole, our whole thing, by 100 to give us 1%. Okay, so in this example, 200 is my whole. So to work out what 1% of 200 is, I'm simply going to divide 200 by 100, which equals 2. So 1% of 200 equals 2. Okay. So what about this one then? This one's asking me 1% 1 of 4,000. So I can do the same thing. To find 1%, I can divide 4,000 by 100. Four thousand divided by one hundred equals yep, it equals forty. So one percent of four thousand equals forty. So finally I've got a problem for us to do together. So I'm going to start off by reading it out. Annie needs to make one thousand two hundred and seventy cupcakes for a party. In the morning, she makes 50% of the cupcakes. In the afternoon, Annie makes another 10% of her target amount of cupcakes. How many more cupcakes does she need to make? Okay, so we're gonna work this through step by step. And so we're gonna take the first part of the problem first. So we're going to be looking at what 50% of 1,270 is, because that's how many she makes in the morning. Okay, so Annie needs to make 1,270 cupcakes for a party. In the morning, she makes 50% of the cupcakes. So the first thing I want to do is split my bar in half, like we did before, because we're trying to find 50%. And we know that 50% is equivalent to one half. So to work out what 50% of 1,270 is, we simply need to divide it by two. So 1,270 divided by 2. Now, I'm going to do this in a bus stop method. So there we go, I've got my bus stop method ready. So how many times does 2 go into 1? It doesn't. So I'm going to cross my 1 out and carry that over. How many times does 2 go into 12? I know that is 6. How many times does two go into seven? It goes in three times with one remaining, so I'm going to carry that over. How many times does two go into 10? It goes in five times. Okay, so that means I can label my bar with 635 in each section because I know that 50% of 1,270 is 635. Okay, so that's my answer to the first part. 
So we know that Annie makes 635 cupcakes in the morning. Okay, we need to remember that. So in the next part of our problem, Annie said in the afternoon, she makes another 10% of her target amount of cupcakes. So this part is asking us what 10% of 1,270 is. Okay, so again, I've got my bar here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to divide my bar up into 10 equal sections. Okay, so one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there we go. There are my very uneven sections again. But I know that to find 10%, I need to divide my whole by 10. Okay, so I'm trying to find what this part represents. 1,270 divided by 10 equals 127. Okay, so that's my answer there, 127. So each part of my bar represents 127. Okay, so that's our second part solved. So in the afternoon, Annie makes another 10% of her target cupcakes, which we now know is 127 cupcakes. Okay, so I've brought our problem back now, just to remind us. But the first thing we did was we found what 50% of 1,270 was, which we worked out to be 635. We then worked out what 10% of 1,270 was, which we worked out to be 127. So we can now add those two together to figure out what the total number of cupcakes is that Annie's already made. Okay, so I'm going to add those together. So 7 plus 5 is 12. 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 at the bottom is 6. And then 6 plus 1 is 7. So in total, Annie has already made 762 cupcakes. But the question is asking us, how many more cupcakes does she need to make? So to figure this out, we can take our whole, and our whole, as we discussed at the beginning, was 1,270. Okay, and we need to take what she's already made away from that. So she's made 762. So I'm going to take 762 away from 1,270. Okay, so zero take away two, I can't do. So I'm going to change that to a six and carry one over. Ten take away two is eight. Six take away six is zero. Two take away seven, I can't do. So I'm going to cross out my one here and carry that over. And 12 take away seven is five. Okay, so that's our answer. So we've just figured out that Annie still needs to make 508 more cupcakes. Okay, so well done for working through that with me. Now it's your turn. If you feel like you need a bit more practice, you can always rewind this video and watch it again. But if you're feeling okay, go and find the worksheet on today's blog and give it a try yourself. Let us know how you get on. Bye.